All right, we're going to continue with how to hatch the elevations. I'm going to turn off the uh, hex guidelines for a second. All right. Remember to put in the water table trim on the elevation light, inch and a half up above. <laughs> the bottom of the line of the water table trim is at finished floor. Then, of course, you have your three and a half inch trim and a three half inch trim around the windows. So, at the porch over here, you're going to see the water table trim. This is actually at finished floor. Then the porch line is here. And then we have ground lines. I don't have any right or wrong answers to that. Try to follow basically what I did. This is approximately eight inches below. And it's just straight across at this point. Because a little bit past and then angles down. We don't need any jagged edges because when they grade that up to the house, it's not going to have any jagged edges. It's going to be relatively smooth. Over here, six inches each for the step. Of course, the first one is an inch and a half below on the porch, so it's an inch and a half below the finished floor and the door. And then six inches, six inches, and that should be six inches too. Looks like I may not have drawn it exactly right, but it should be six inches down. And then I just angled it slightly going in this direction and angled it on the other side slightly in that direction. And you do have the concrete porch behind the steps here. The edge line should be lining up with the edge of the column. And then this, again, it's about eight inches down, straight across, and then goes out a little bit for the ground line. And then it's, it's similar on the other two elevations, three elevations. So on the east elevation, the garage doors are five inches down from finished floor. That information occurred in the first handout, probably at the end of the setting up the UCS and the views discussion. Uh, it was back in lecture nine, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, let me look real quick. the end of that discussion on the last couple of pages all header eyes are seven feet the trim around the windows are three and a half inches the seal is an inch and a half uh, the porch surface is an inch and a half below the first finished floor the bottom of the garage doors are located five inches down so anyway if you put them in a finished floor, you need to move them down. And also the trim at the garage doors and at the sliding glass door in the back is different than the rest of the trim. These happen to be on the medium layer. Anyway, at the five inches down, it's basically paving there. So I just run this line straight across at that five inches down and then on out a little bit. This is out in front of the porch. So this is the ground in front of it. This is the ground beyond. So that's more or less running straight across there. And then starting here, it's just angling out to get under the last, your last step here, that 18 inches down from the porch. And then at the back, angles down a little bit. Then this is pretty straight across, a little bit past the door here, and then it goes down to the... I drew this about eight, again, eight inches would probably work, but I drew it eight and a half. This is out in front again, so this is representing the ground in front. This is the ground beyond, and that's pretty much a straight line to here. And then it slightly angles this way. <clears throat> and the trim on the back is a elevation dark, not a elevation like at that sliding glass door. So there are two exceptions to the trim being on a elevation light: the sliding glass door and the garage doors. And then on the west side. This again is should be the same thing. It's on the back and then it runs down a little bit. This comes up slightly 
and then from here it runs all the way down to underneath that 18 inches at the porch on the other side so it didn't go crazy with it it's just kind of either a straight line or a slightly sloped line depending on where those, those points are usually eight inches to this 18 inches just pay attention to where it's you know it's one is out in front of the other and then don't forget to put in your water table trim all the way around the trim itself will stop there there are a couple of exceptions but in most cases it's going to stop at the top of the water table trim the exceptions would be by the doors the trim of the door is going to go all the way down on both sides but in most cases the actual trim at the edge of the wall is going to go down to the water table trim Again, at the door all the way down, but not at the other ones. And not at the sliding glass. I'm not sure why that is inconsistent, but that's the way the people who designed it wanted it, so we'll keep it that way. So that's basically, the ground line base is on a elevation cut. It's a white line. Okay, the hatch, similar to the plan, it has its own quirks. Uh, it's not difficult, but it is sometimes tricky, depending on if the hatch wants to cooperate or not. Remember that hatch fights with multiliters. So if you happen to have your text on and your multiliters in, and it's not wanting to hatch, just freeze that layer. And you'll probably have better luck. All right, so for the elevation hatch, it's gonna be A elevation pat for the layer. Which is, I'm not in the right place, there it is. It says 252, it's continuous. And we're gonna use a user to find hatch. Typically it's going to come in with a just a normal pattern already created so you got to set it to user defined. We want a spacing of three inches for the horizontal direction and you always want to set the origin at the top of the water table trim. That way it will begin three inches up and don't the hatch in trim. If you're lucky you might be able to hatch it all at once. Sometimes it can be just like with the plan it can be arbitrary. Uh, if you miss something you can always separate the hatches and redo it but if you do make sure you set that origin because what we don't want to see is some of the lines here and some of the lines there because that pattern should be the same all because the siding would be at the same place all the way across so that pattern needs to be at the same. in other words if you do it separately sometimes the siding's here and then it gets offset and it looks weird when it crosses the page so it needs to be aligned across the page and you do that by setting the origin and then you could go on to the other elevations so hatch it's user defined three inches you always want to set the origin at the height higher point here but at the edge of the water table trim make sure you're not hatching the porch or in some trim somewhere real easy to hatch through the trim so now I don't have any trim up there so I'm curious if I just hatched it if it's going to line up sometimes it will sometimes it won't this is what I want to avoid see how this is not in line with that they need to be aligned with each other all right you know what 
I said three inches. That's a mistake. That's for brick. This is siding. So let's go back to the front elevation and I'll show you how you can fix it after the fact. So we put this in at three inches. It really should be six inches. So since it's all in there together, if I select this hatch, I can just come up here and say six. Not 63. Six. And that fixed it. That's all you have to do. You just got to change the spacing. All right, so now let's go back to the this elevation and let's try this again. So hatch, user defined. This should say six inches, not three inches. I was thinking brick, not siding. All right, so set the origin at the top of the water table trim, which means you have to put the water table in before you can do the hatch. User defined six inches set origin. All right, now this is tricky because this is actually trim and that's trim, but this part is not. So you don't want to hatch through any trim. So this is the column out in front, and this is actually three and a half inch trim beyond. So I'm going to start over. At origin. That's the roof, so that's not right. I missed one, so we got to start over. Set origin. If you don't set that origin every time, a lot of times it won't line up correctly, and it needs to line up. This is trim board beyond, so you don't hatch that. You would hatch here. This is between the column and the three and a half inch trim there, so that needs to be hatched. Go back to the front. Now we need to hatch the roof. The hatch for the roof on the elevation belongs on the A elevation pattern layer because it's part of the elevation layers. Even though it's the roof, you put it on the elevation pattern layer. We do we change the spacing to 12 and we change the angle to 90. This you don't have to worry about it lining up because it doesn't line up across the page really. So you can just insert this stuff. Okay, doesn't like something with that, so I don't know what it doesn't like yet. Let's do this up here. There, do that there. Do that there. I don't know. All right. So it's not liking something because that should not have gone through all the way down to here. So I'm not sure why it did that because I don't see anything open really. All right, and it did the same thing over here. It didn't do it here, and it didn't do it there. So it doesn't belong in the trim and the uh, fascia. So I need to separate that out. So you can do that by saying separate hatches. So I'm going to erase this one and that one. It doesn't like something about something through here. I'm not sure what. Make sure all that's closed. And let's see if that makes any difference. Did 
that time it hatched correctly. Something was open right through that area there. So let's see if this one will hatch now. Okay. So that time it hatched correctly, but it didn't hatch correctly the first time. So you have to be careful when you're putting... It looks like it goes in and it looks like it's good, but then when you start really looking at it, oh, that shouldn't have hatched through something. So you have to be careful about that. Also, for the hatch for the surface of the concrete, we're going to use AR Sand 3.0. That is a uh, not a user-defined, that's actually a defined hatch. This one, AR Sand. Put it in at three. And that anywhere there's concrete, that's because I don't have it all on the screen. All right, so this is wrong because it hatched into the water table trim. Matter of fact, it went every, went a little bit crazy in there. So, Maybe we need to do this one at a time instead. I didn't do anything different than I did the first time other than I just separated the hatches out. It's one of those better than it used to be but it's still not a perfect program but anyway that's the process and you would do it on all four elevations for the roof plan you would also use a 12 inch spacing and you would do it in the direction of the slope but it belongs on a roof path not a elevation path so, and I would also to avoid gaps in the hatch freeze everything except for the roof and the pattern layer. So come back and a roof path. So a elevation path for anything on the elevations, a roof path for the roof plan itself. <clears throat> That's still going to be a user defined. It's still going to be 12 inches apart, and it's going to depend on which direction you're trying to hatch, which way this needs to be. They just need to be lined up. So it needs to be in the direction of the slope that the roof is in. And then for the other direction, you would just change it back to zero. You don't have to I would do things on both sides of themselves at the same time so it's going to align the hatch. By turning off that layer and doing it this way you don't get gaps in the hatch. And of course you would have to add the verbiage and the uh, text for the, the uh, roof for this. All right, let me, it's seven. Okay, let's take a break for about 20 minutes and we'll come back at 7.20.